In this video, we will discuss the mechanisms for an ACL tear, describe who may be at higher risk for an ACL tear, as well as provide screening techniques to assess your risk. Parents, if you have children in youth or high school sports, you will want to use the screening techniques in this section to assess your child's risk of tearing his or her ACL. The ACL or anterior cruciate ligament is injured by one of the following mechanisms. When pivoting and quickly changing directions, the body rotates to the midline and with the foot staying planted, an excessive rotational force happens at the knee. The ACL can also be injured with a combination of hyperextension and rotation of the body over it. This usually happens when landing from a jump or trying to stop abruptly while running. The foot plants, but the momentum carries the body forward and rotates over the knee, causing the ACL to rupture. The ACL can also be injured by a direct blow to the knee, but is frequently injured without contact. We see non-contact injury commonly in basketball and soccer. Interestingly enough, female athletes are more at risk for non-contact ACL injuries than male athletes. There is a plethora of research that demonstrates female soccer players are three to four times more likely to tear their ACL than male soccer players and four to eight times more likely to tear their ACL in basketball. Why is this? There are several theories, but the most credible theory is that males and females use their bodies differently. Men use their hips more when they squat. Notice how he comes down and he's got a nice hip angle and it's good forward body length. Women use their quadriceps more. That is, they're more upright and use their hips less. Notice how upright she is. She doesn't have as forward of a body lean as he had and is using her knees more. Fortunately, research also demonstrates that female athletes can reduce the risk of ACL injuries to similar rates of their male athlete counterparts with certain training programs. Research demonstrates a reduction of ACL injuries by as much as 80% after specific training programs geared toward correcting landing mechanics while jumping and strengthening the hips. Whether you're a male or a female athlete, a quick self-assessment can be performed to gauge your risk or the risk of your child. Let's look at the single leg squat. A proper squat should maintain the knee in alignment with the ankle and the hip. If the knee comes inward during this squat, then it tells us that the hip is not strong enough to control the femur. Remember, one mechanism of the ACL injury is the knee coming inward and excessive rotation. If she cuts out of this position, she is at risk for tearing her ACL. Next, let's look at the step down. Attempt a slow controlled step down, leaving one foot on the box and lowering the other leg. Again, we look to see if the alignment of the knee, ankle, and hip can be maintained. If the knee travels inward, she is at risk. Finally, try a drop jump. Jump down off the box and land on both legs. If the natural landing technique is to remain upright and not bend the knees and hips as much, then she is at risk. From the side, notice how upright she is and how little bend she has in her hips and her knees. We want to get her lower when she lands. If the knees come inward during the landing, she is at risk for an ACL tear. The goal is to land with a neutral alignment with the hips, knee, and ankles in line and absorbing the shock by flexing the knees and the hips. From the side, you can see that when she lands, her hips and knees flex more. Thus, she is less vulnerable to tearing her ACL. If one of these tests is positive, you may be at risk for injuring your ACL. Call our office and set up a free consultation with one of our physical therapists who specialize in sports medicine. An injury prevention program can be created to reduce your risk of injury.